Hey, hi everyone. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. I'm Holly from Unearthed and I'm joined today by um, a number of esteemed experts and practitioners uh, to have a conversation about exploration data and how it can be used uh, in data science and machine learning applications. So uh, before I introduce uh, everyone on the call, um, just as some background to why we're having this conversation, um, I think it's a really interesting point in time for data science and exploration. Um, a lot of people are seeing the value of machine learning and looking to use those techniques, but also struggling to kind of get started. And that's, I think, whether you're a geologist or a data scientist. Um, so today we're gonna to have a look at this kind of problem or question from both sides. Um, and I think it's a really unusual and good opportunity to get a group like this together where everyone has experience in their field and lots of uh, relevant ideas to share. Um, so before I ask everyone to introduce themselves, um, I will say that everyone on this call, apart from myself, uh, are winners of the Explore SA Data Prep Prize. So Explore SA, the Gawler Challenge, is the largest ever government-run open data challenge for exploration. Um, it's being run by the South Australian government currently with a total prize fall of $250,000. It closes on the 31st of July. Um, and the data prep prize was the first phase of this challenge where people were asked to share their workflows, code, um, engineered data sets uh, to show how exploration data could be used uh, in machine learning and analytics. So definitely go and check out all of that information afterwards. Uh, some really great resources there. Um, Okay, so without further ado, I will ask everyone to kind of take turns at introducing themselves. Um, Jack, why don't you go first? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so I'm Jack Morn. I'm a South Australian geologist based in Victoria at the moment. And uh, yeah, I guess over the last sort of 12 months to 18 months, I've sort of been getting more and more involved in the, uh, the data science side of geology and trying to find applications and yeah, how we can sort of incorporate machine learning and AI into the geosciences. Cool. Who wants to go next? Jump in. Who's next around the round on my screen? Michael. Oh, okay. Hey. Uh, so yeah, I'm Michael. Uh, I'm a data scientist based in Melbourne. So I guess I should say I was the winner of last year's Explorer Challenge. Um, and since then I started Cadera Analytics to kind of continue the work. Um, also looking at how machine learning can be applied to geology. Uh, Liang, why don't you go for it? Hi, uh, this is uh, Liang and uh, I'm a software engineer and I do have some opportunity to work closely with data scientists and I, in my spare time, I sometimes join some uh, uh, competition. Like last year, I joined the Melbourne Data Thon and we win the first place solution. Yeah, so which pushed me to spend more energy on this data science field. Yep, that's it for me. Awesome. And well, you worked uh, with Yang in a team together? Uh, yes, yeah. Um, I'm and the data science that based in Melbourne as well. Um, uh, but uh, before I didn't uh, have any experience processing the, and uh, the, geo, the, the spatial uh, data sets. So I like the challenge from this kind of uh, complex uh, data sets. Um, I have a, 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 a good knowledge about the machine learning, but not too much about uh, uh, geologists. So this, um, this challenge can bring me to a new world, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> cool. cool. And last but not least, Russell and Ahmad. Okay. Uh, so, so hi, I'm Russell. And you're based in Perth. So I'm a geologist by education who worked as a oil and gas explorationist for a few years before moving into data sciences and finally ended up working in the mining industry. So combining geology and data sciences and trying to do something revolutionary in the mining industry. And uh, my name is Ahmad. I was an exploration geologist for a long, long time. Um, I guess I played around in this space for a while and now Russell and I are kind of trying to do something together um, and and this uh, competition was our first go at it, really. Cool. Everyone's saying that we're exploration geologists. Some people do stay doing it, Jack, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I was a geologist as well, just to just for context. I still, I still, I still am. Uh, okay, cool. So on, I guess on, let's get started. And on that topic of, uh, of geologists, 
uh, as we do have an experience there. Um, yeah, as I guess I kicked off with, there's a lot of exploration geologists that are, are really interested in starting to use machine learning in a lot of their workflows. I think we've definitely got over a bit of that hype where people now actually understand a little bit more about what it is. They can see how it can deliver value for them and they want to use it, but they're kind of finding it a little bit difficult to get started. So I suppose the question is like, what, what do you think those barriers are? Um, and yeah, ha what tips would you give someone that wanted to get started? So I guess, Jack, given your experience in that, I'll flick that to you first to yeah, answer yeah, that one. Sure. Um, so I think it's, it's probably learning to code or, or yeah, understanding a programming language is the biggest one. You know, you just sort of show a few lines of code to a geologist and it, no interest at all, like, um, which I completely understand. And so I think trying to just get past that, you know, how does programming work? How, how can you use it in a, you know, just in day-to-day -day geology life, like in a, in a mining field or, yeah, exploration setting. Um, and I think even then, once you've sort of grasped how coding works and that it's, it's applying it to geological data sets and that that's sort of I guess where I'm so grateful for unearthed and, and those sort of competitions because you know you can look at how to use Python in you know trying to search for fraud in, in bank transactions that kind of thing you know it's great but after a while it's like well, what am I doing like it's how is this going to help so trying to make that sort of yeah bridge that gap between coding and the geosciences how it fits in there yeah okay cool and what about um do you think in terms of people getting getting started on coding um do you think people if they if they get to know a little bit they can then potentially i'd know go and then talk to someone like michael and say look i, I know the basics but i'd actually rather have someone else come and do this for me <laughs> is are you seeing people kind of do that as well yeah i think so and like yeah a lot of um even, even yeah, AI now and machine learning, there's there's heaps of different programs that are made that people can, like Orange, for example, is a, is a great one. You can just throw data in it and you don't even have to look at code. It's just there, ready to go. Yeah, so that's an interesting one. Do you think that's a bit of the way forward in the future then is that there'll be more of these kind of softwares that are easy for people to use so they don't really need to have too much domain expertise to get their heads around it? I think so, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't think we're there at the moment, but it's getting there, yeah. Yeah, cool. All right, the other geologists on the call, uh, Russell and Amad, what I guess what would your take be on that? Continuing from where, what Jack mentioned, there are quite a lot of softwares now that take off the machine learning bits. There's even something called AutoML, which is, it basically tries like almost hundreds of different machine learning models and tries to give you different results. But then to do all of that, again, you need to provide your data in a particular format. So this is where I feel people coming in from other industries uh, have problems with because when you do, when you start off in data sciences, you go on Kaggle or you go on to other websites and do tutorials, they always give you your data in a structured format, which is in a CSV table and show you the way ahead from there. But no one teaches you how to go from your, how to build that data set. So that's what I see is the biggest challenge. And then the, in, uh, so I feel the initial competition that Unearth held was quite helpful in challenging that particular issue where it showed people how to go from your raw data sets into a machine learning ready data set. Yeah, and I think, I mean, that's part of the reason why we did it, right? Because we know that people, are, a lot of the time, they can't find a tangible kind of instruction or what to actually do. Like, okay, everyone tells me I need to clean my data up for machine learning, but I don't know what that means. So I think that is a good, a good, a good starting point. I suppose if there's any, from your experience, if you, for someone that's you know, a pure geologist with, with no experience, like are there tools uh, with no experience in data science, are there tools that people, people can just kind of jump on and, and use, or do they need to do a bit of basic onboarding or should they just go and read your data prep price submission and then they'll be fine? They can probably read Jack's medium posts, which are very helpful and funny and interesting. Cheers. Good yeah, so <laughs> quite a lot, yeah. And it's like someone asked me, I, prob I always direct them to his posts. Oh. If you want to get into data sciences and, and then new, new to machine learning, his posts are very helpful to get people started. And I suppose on that, I mean, I know you guys kind of, um, well, some of the businesses you're involved in are, are kind of addressing this issue as well. So what part do you think you know, products on the market, companies, service providers can, can do 
so that geologists don't have to do that hard work themselves. I mean, it's always an option to go and learn it yourself, but if you're not going to have that time, like say you're, you know, senior geo, you want to start using machine learning, you can't go and like invest in learning to code, like what would you do then? I mean, I, th I think the, the, the problem around like, you know, how people are using the data is, I think it's because as a community, we probably don't have those data sets available. Uh, like, you know, like if you look at survey data sets, you know, they're kind of getting into the space where they can make that data sets available. Uh, I think there'll always be a minority of people that will actually have the skills to go through the data. I think that's going to, you know, it's not going to be, um, it's not going to be a likely outcome that the whole industry will become better at handling the data. I don't think that's going to be the case. So it will be kind of, I think, imperative on, you know, people that provide these data sets to actually solve a problem that you should provide your data set that it can be used by, you know, data scientists, uh, someone that's a hybrid, a data scientist and a geologist, as well as a geologist that might not have much data science skills. Um, and I think that, you know, like the work that you guys do and there's, um, you know, I guess that level of awareness that's um, coming into surveys, I think it's increasing that, that people actually have to start uh, providing the data sets in a different way. You know, the end user is no longer just the geologist trying to do GIS stuff. The end user is now a hybrid group of people that are trying to do different things. Yeah, and we definitely saw, yeah, that the, the data prep prize phase, like the the survey in South Australia were really stoked with a lot of the outcomes because they could see how they could apply them straight away to make their data more accessible. So yeah, lots of benefits for individuals doing it, but I think for the survey to see actually, oh, this is how people want to use our data now in a different way, is really helpful. And I think it's just a question of like, you know, like surveys have limited resources. So yeah, the, the, the harder thing is to figure out what you need to do. Uh, you know, like survey so can't go and do all the 50 things that are required. So there's a little bit of like market kind of dynamics that, you know, we as a community or through these competitions or whatever the mechanism is, you know, like I think you guys are doing a good job as, as on earth creating the mechanism. So it raises awareness of what data sets people want. Uh, but as a survey, you know, they need to figure out what they need to put their resources on. Uh, you know, like what do they, what should they do first and what should they do like at, at the end? Um, so I, I think once they start figuring that out, you know, they will do it. It's just a matter of that information doesn't quite exist right now. Yeah. And it's a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. And like, you know, like surveys run, you know, like a lot of surveys run with the smell of an oily rag, you know, like in Australia, we, we're quite uh, fortunate that our surveys are that well funded, but you know, in other places, you know, like there would be one tenth the funding available for a lot of surveys that we have there. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, I suppose, um, yeah, on the kind of continuing on that, uh, it sounds like for geologists, then the tip would be maybe learn a basic bit of code, at least maybe learn how to frame a question in language that a, a data scientist might understand so they can kind of use your, use your data. Um, Ahmad, are you seeing anything? I mean, you talk to a lot of obviously really interesting people in, your, in, in some of the stuff you do, um, I guess from that, yeah, more senior level, are you seeing any trends in how people are trying to changing how they're using machine learning and exploration? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I, I mean, I guess you kind of mentioned it at the start that I think a lot of people want to use machine learning, you know, but they're not quite sure, like, how to frame the, the question or what skills they, they kind of need. Um, and I think it's just the, the lack of kind of a common language, you know, like as geologists or as practitioners in geosciences, we don't quite understand the data science world. And, and data scientists, I don't think quite understand our language. So there has to be, I think, some evolutionary step in the middle that allows people to understand you know, each other. And to go back to this point about like, you know, what should you do? I think, like in my opinion, I think the one thing you need to kind of figure out if you want to play in this space is uh, like, you know, do you want to learn how to drive or do you just want to get to a different spot? And that's, I think, a really key kind of metric you need to figure out. You know, like, okay, you need to find you, out who's the Uber. Yeah, that's right. Like, you know, like, if, you know, I think you should be really clear about what do you want to do. Like, you know, like, do you just want to get from point A to point B? Well, there's many ways to get there. You know, like Russell mentioned auto ML. You know, you can learn coding. You can do many different things if you want to do. Uh, or do you want to actually build a skill set? And I think that's, so, like, from... To answer your question about what happens in kind of the senior level, I think people aren't quite sure as organizations, what do they want to have? Do they want to have 
a lot of people that know how to drive or do they just want to have a lot of people that get them to a different spot? Yeah. And I think that's the challenge that you have to figure out. So last little question for the geos. I think the other interesting thing that we're seeing is at the moment is as people are getting more used to learn, using machine learning, they're trying to want to deploy models and call on them regularly, uh, which poses a new challenge in itself. Um, are you guys seeing that the same thing about, especially when people are kind of doing, I guess, near miss style projects and things like that, where they're using somewhat near real time drilling data? Maybe not. <laughs> Something about deployment, but what related to deployment? So like if you were um, wanting to use some predictions uh, on a local scale, so use your kind of real time drilling data to inform what you might be seeing, um, what you might predict downhole in the next meter coming, something like that. So you're, I guess, using um, those models in, not for like a one-off static prediction, but ongoing. So I guess it's more a question, it's more an observation that we're seeing that people in the exploration uh, space are now looking at. Talking about, I can't visualize it in the mining space because they don't use a lot of downhole drilling. Uh, uh, or, or, or they don't, or the tool, like within oil and gas, there's a common tool called quad combo where you have like five logs that are continuously produced. And based on that, you can create a model that can predict probably lithology or, an, or organic content or something similar. But whereas in mining, I think it's one tool at a time. Yeah, so like, I mean, I, think, I guess in mining, uh, I mean, I don't know if I want to throw Michael under the bus, but yeah, isn't a part of the whole, like the second stage of the Explorer challenge was that they wanted to do real time uh, kind of targeting out of it. So maybe Michael yep. want to talk about it. Yeah, um, I think deployment in the like, the data science context, like there's probably very, very few um, applications of machine learning and exploration that you really need a deployed model that's that's going to like work. Like if it sits there for like two years, like I think when it comes to exploration, as soon as you like shift maybe uh, like to a different state, um, like everything changes. And with like the real time drilling stuff, Everything's still in the R&D phase, I think, like, there's no kind of, <clears throat> there's no base, like, no one's reached a consistent baseline with applying machine learning algorithms where they can then deploy it and trust it, I think, uh, to maybe, you know, in banking or commerce where you're deploying <clears throat> recommendation systems and they can be trusted. I don't think machine learning is, is at that stage uh, when it comes to mineral exploration. Yeah, no, I think that's... Yeah, your, the geology is so variable everywhere that you can't create yeah. one model that's 100%. across everywhere. And again, so that's just one problem. And then there's the tool calibration. <clears throat> each operator, each operator's tool response would be different. There are too many variables within geology to actually do something real time, at least with the current level of technology. Mm. All right. Well, maybe we'll, maybe we'll pivot and look at it from the, the data science point of view. I know when I first started uh, looking into machine learning, I thought exploration was a great, uh, great area for machine learning to be applied to. And most data scientists I talked to just laughed in my face because our data was really horrible. <laughs> um, so I guess that, that's, that kind of goes on to the next question of, um, you know, um, for data scientists, like, you know, particularly like Yang and how, like you guys are new to this, to this industry um, and, and the data is not necessarily really accessible. Um, yeah, I, I keen to hear, I guess the question is for people looking to get started from a data science point of view, what, what tips would you give people to kind of get started on exploration data? Well, yeah, so, um, I think the first uh, uh, thing came to my mind is the domain knowledge. Since I lack of the domain knowledge, so I was, at the beginning, I was uh, struggling with so many format, like uh, in our industry, the, the data format is like so many formats. So at the beginning, I was uh, uh, trying to convert the data. That has spent me a lot of time. So I think it, ideally in the future, uh, if we kind of like, uh, 
our industry, we, we, we can merge uh, different format into like a several, uh, like a few format. So that'll be easier for people to get a start. Yeah, that's my point of view. Yeah. And I guess, the, oh, sorry, sorry, I didn't read the comments. It's a, a compliment is that we thought um, from the data science point of view for doing the uh, machine learning might be not very difficult to train an algorithm, but the thing is uh, which algorithm we should, uh, we should train and then uh, before um, before making a decision, we need to understand the whole problem. So it's uh, um, uh, that's why our team we invite another uh, another participants to join us to our team, and he is from a background of the geophysics. Um, for us, it's a lot of easy to understand the uh, the, uh, the geology and the other data sets. So. Uh, because for every um, for every subject, they have their own meaning in, um, when they interpret the data. So if we know the meaning of behind the data, we can um, we can do better when we do the feature engineering or something else. Uh, so uh, um, we are trying to make an effort on this side, uh, but the machine learning itself, uh, we kind of using some um, uh, um, standard machine learning algorithm and then train, train try to uh, have different uh, algorithms in group. So uh, 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 for a uh, data scientist to, to work on this project, uh, the difficult thing is to understand the data itself and uh, how, learn how to integrate the data in the background and uh, uh, build the link between the data and the machine, machine learning. I, I noticed um, I, like uh, several data sets, we, we generate the, uh, the data for each element, like the, like the uh, gold and the co uh, like the copper. Uh, but uh, in terms of the machine, ma machine learning, this can be used as, uh, um, as the neighbors for, uh, for neighbor one. But for the neighbor zero, we still need to get the other that. So that's uh, that's kind of uh, interesting. We're still going to go back to that uh, the data as well. So uh, yeah, in, when we uh, put the uh, results of the data engineering in front of the machine learning, we'll find something missing. I want not very in, in the exact format we expect. So uh, the link between the uh, the data and the machine learning is a part we need to strengthen. Yeah, I guess, Michael, do you have any thoughts on that? I guess, given your journey you went on with the Explorer Challenge? Yeah, I mean, I probably sound like a broken record now uh, because everyone's mentioned domain experience, but it's just like, it is so, so true. Um, there's so many, like, so many data sets out there that if you, if you have learned data science through Kaggle competitions where you just think, okay, let's just load up every possible like data set related to geo uh, geology and geophysics and fire it up on trying to predict gold or copper deposits. You're going to come up with a model, but it's, it's going to be crap. Um, and the problem is like, you need to make so many assumptions to convert all this data into uh, input that's required for machine learning. And if you don't have, the right domain expertise or know someone with the domain expertise, you're going to make some pretty dodgy assumptions that it's probably just going to torpedo the, the output of the model. And I guess probably everyone comes into machine learning in mineral exploration because they want to predict the next big deposit. And like that is a really, really, really hard challenge because machine learning just kind of follows uh, like the complexity of, of the process um, outside of machine learning. So to clarify that, it's really hard for geos to try and like predict the major deposits. So naturally machine learning isn't going to come in and be like, you know, a thousand times better. So <laughs> like <clears throat> a lot of people, a lot of data scientists will come in and try and uh, predict, like try and predict gold, gold deposits or copper deposits, but 
it's probably best, like, if you're interested in visual exploration, to probably pick something that isn't as challenging as that because that just requires, like, you need to know geophysics, you need to know geology, you need to know, yeah, you need to spend ages trying to clean those data sets to get enough data to be able to get a good algorithm. So, yeah, probably pick something less complex than prospectivity, but when people think data science and machine learning in, in exploration, that is 100% what people think and yeah and when it doesn't work people will be like oh yeah data science hasn't been used in your exploration but if if machine learning is like improving the rates of success from like one in 1000 to one in 500 that's massive but it's very hard to quantify that yeah i think that's a really a really good point like i um you know I don't want to say geologists are bad at finding deposits. So it's just a fundamentally really hard thing to do. It's a massive challenge, no matter which way you look at it, because nature's just so chaotic and these things are, are really, really yeah. small and hard to find. Um, but like I say, if you can improve the process, even from, yeah, from, you know, being 0.1% success rate to, yeah, 0.5% success rate, that's a, that's a massive improvement, but it's very, very hard to, quantify that we've seen people make some attempts and some claims um but it is really hard to put that number up because we don't have that feedback loop i guess yeah i mean i just said it's really hard but in the end like data science and machine learning i've kind of just gone off for a rant here but it kind of it has to work because if machine learning and data science and mineral exploration doesn't work then that implies that geology is random and there's a bit of shots fired there, but, you know, it's got to work. It's just stats. Well, I guess there's some, there is some, I, I'm sorry, I'm going off a bit of a tangent here, but I think this is interesting because I think there's some, it's almost like a scale thing. Like, I feel like there's some order at regional scales, but there's certainly a chaotic nature to mineral deposits that we that, that are, are not ordered. So without maybe saying they're completely random, there's definitely chaos there and i think it's a good argument to say is it reasonable to be able to predict something on on that real local scale at all when we don't understand you know like we understand or deposit systems but we can't then explain and pick apart exactly where something will form and be and, and occur but i guess this is kind of you could go down a philosophical route here pretty easily <laughs> yeah i guess yeah if i could say anything to like data scientists like really uh, speak to a geo or get a textbook <laughs> and it will help a lot. <laughs> but it is a really interesting problem though. I think it's, it's a big problem for our industry, right? Like discovery rates are low. Like it's, it's hard, but it's a problem worth looking into. I hope. <laughs> oh yeah, it is. <laughs> Anyone else have comments on that? The data science side? Well, I guess coming from the, the, the geo side and, branching into that, like the data science it's every day I'm sort of thinking more like more and more how chaotic our geology data is and you know trying to get into a usable form is is a huge challenge like yeah I always hear like I see online you know data scientists saying oh the reality is it's like 90% data cleaning 10% running algorithms but I think data science in mineral exploration is like 99.99% yes. data cleaning. It's right. just, in, it's just insane. I've spent so long like reading PDFs or exploration reports, correcting stuff. And it's, just, yeah, it's, it's yeah. amazing you're still doing it. It will never end. <laughs> I understand uh, when I try to invite the, uh, and like the people from the ge uh, ge geology background to join us. And, uh, and then when I talk about the data science, they say, okay, well, I did the PhD in the research, but uh, our data is clean. So, uh, but uh, your data set, we can't help. <laughs> That's a uh, good reason to refuse me. <laughs> so like most people have mentioned, like uh, Michael mentioned, it's 99% data cleaning and that takes a lot of time. So what we've actually focused on is automating that bit and we feel we are getting pretty close to reducing even though it's 99% of the work, it wouldn't by automating it, you're not spending 99% of your time on that, rather like 20 or 30%. Yeah, I think if you guys could do that, man. That 
too much of details yeah but you'll see stuff slowly <laughs> uh, bit of a teaser there <laughs> but i think like you know like a lot of the stuff that people are talking about i think kind of goes to the fundamental point that you know like for machine learning to work really well our data has to be in a kind of a, a structured or some format which allows it to be digested and you know like utilized in a manner um, yeah, like as Michael has said, like, you know, other people have said as well, like, you know, like our data sets are, you know, like at best described as a shotgun pattern right now. So it's, like, yeah, it's kind of all over the place and how you use them, what you use, you know, what format you use them. I think that's the challenging part about trying to, uh, you know, incorporate more of the data science world into geology right now. So mm. you know, we don't really, I think, have the maturity of kind of data structures right now to, uh, to, to realistically probably use uh, machine learning and you know, kind of these techniques to the full, uh, full capacity right now. Yeah, and I, th I think what's interesting though, um, like we're kind of all commenting on like everyone when they think about machine learning and exploration, they think about targeting and prospectivity, but that's probably like the hardest place to start. Whereas I think if you think about your whole exploration workflow and think about, oh, what could I actually potentially just you know, automate or optimize without having to, you know, you can, you can be incredibly, uh, like improve your efficiency incredibly by automating things like data capture, um, data validation, even reporting. Like, uh, <laughs> I was like, my first thing would be like, I don't know how many of you guys have worked as industry geologists, but if you could, you know, just automate reporting, that would save people like half their time. Um, <laughs> so there's all these things that you can use data science machine learning for, I think to kind of, be more, more, have a more data-driven workflow before you kind of take out that silver bullet at the end. Michael, was it in your, um, uh, yeah, entry that had the, the sort of unsupervised learning towards the bottom of it when it came to the cleaning the geochem? No, no. No? No, I, yeah, my, my process is like very methodical, I guess. I don't, yeah, I don't trust unsupervised learning to clean our data yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fair enough, because yeah, I think I think I saw it down the bottom there, and that that's yeah, that could be a, a way forward, I suppose. Oh, that's slave. Like, if, if there's been huge advances advances in like you know, NLP in the last two years, like so much that I'm just like so far behind on it. But like applying those those big advances to so much of that unstructured text data to either clean or, as Holly said, automate reporting, uh, or like morphology. I'm sure there's something there, like. Yeah, that's massive. And I think this is, I mean, I guess a point that, yeah, like, like Holly and a couple of people have made is, um, you know, we, we've started using machine learning, I think, to solve the biggest problem. And I, I think it's fair to say that, you know, it's going to be very low probability that machine learning is going to be the panacea that we need to solve, like finding deposits, right? But now as we kind of go through that chain, maybe we'll find better uses for it which, which solves a lot of the other problems that we have, which will ultimately kind of lead to a like a derivative uh, outcome where we get better at finding you know, deposits. So uh, I think, you know, I think we've kind of accepted that maybe it's not going to be the, you know, just take data sets, throw it in, and it'll tell you X marks a spot and go find a deposit. I, I doubt that's, you know, I think we would be pretty comfortable saying that we've kind of crossed that bridge. Now it's more about where can we use it most effectively. We always stress that use machine learning to improve each workflow and data set and ultimately use your geology experience and domain knowledge to know where to go to drill. Yeah, and I think, I guess, like Michael, you indicated, like, if, if geologists can't do it, it's unlikely that machine learning can be, like, fundamentally completely much, much, much better. I, I still, yeah, I'm still confident in that, because <laughs> uh, that's what I'm working on all the time. But I think... Um, we are in the post AI hype now, but it's just a good reminder that like a lot of the things that cause everyone to be hyped about AI, like deep learning, is just like replicating basic human ability, just like at speed. Um, so people do hear, like you might see in the studies about like deep learning is being doctors at like detecting cancer in x-rays or whatever. And 99% of the time you look at them and like it's a bit of a clickbait headline and it's not quite true. And I think that's important to kind of consider in the context of mineral exploration is that uh, like trying to beat 
like a machine learning algorithm, like it's, it's not going to be two times or like three times as good as like the subject matter experts. It just, it just won't, but it'll be very fast. It'll be very bias free. Uh, very, very, very fast. So that's really important. Yeah. And I guess that goes back to, I guess what I was saying before, I think with some of my frustrations working as the industry geologist is just so inefficient. So I'm happy to have anything that just makes it faster because ultimately the better you can use your exploration dollars, the more likely you are to be able to find something, I think as well. Um, Cool. All right. Been on a bit of a rant there, but that's good. This is why I like these conversations. Um, so the next kind of question that I had in line was a little bit more specific. So it was around, um, I guess, for each of you, um, in terms of your submission, I guess, for ex the Explorer Say Data Prep Prize, uh, why did you put that, that specific submission forward? And um, I guess, how did you hope that people would get get a benefit from that? So I don't know, someone someone go first. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll jump in. Uh... I hate cleaning geochemistry data, but uh, it has to be done. Um, so, for you know, I just, if I can save people the pain of having to spend like hours and hours, or well not hours, hundreds of hours going through reports and like figuring out where the data entry errors are and coming up with a faster way to clean it, that'll make me happy. And money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that only benefits you. <laughs> I mean, I guess similar to Michael, you know, like, I, you know, like we've talked about this for a little bit of time about like, you know, like domain expertise is important. So I think, you know, like our, our submission was really built around trying to provide uh, people that may not have that domain expertise or maybe don't have that level of understanding, uh, an idea about uh, that, you know, that the data set that they're using might have, you know, like subpopulations or might have something else in them that they, they need to handle in a different way. Um, so, you know, when you sat down to think about what we wanted to kind of put together, uh, you know, we did really think about trying to put something that would bridge that understanding across the, across the two disciplines, I guess, and that was our intention, really. Anyone else? And the money, as Michael said. Money. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess with mine, um, with the, uh, same with the geochem file, I, I just pictured, you know, a bunch of my geo mates seeing a 10 gigabyte Excel file. And just double click on it and you know, <laughs> waiting for something to happen and for it to be usable. So I guess trying, trying to get that into a, into a form that people can, can visualize. So I think with, um, with yeah, pivoting the table so you can, you can filter by, you know, element and drag and drop it straight into QGIS is something that's, yeah, it's hopefully easy for everyone to sort of get from a, from a big file. Hmm. Yeah. So for our team, so same. So we wanted to save other teams like time. So I, I want to try to write a step-by-step -step, like the instruction, but uh, I can only write that for the remote sensing part. I found it's really hard to write the geochemistry part or geophysical part. So we kind of like provide a code, code for people to uh, keep working on it. Yeah. So that's the thing. Yeah. That's and it. I think um, a common thing, sorry, did you want to say anything, say anything as well? Uh, yeah, I was just wondering, and uh, I, the part I did for our team is that it's uh, I used the the Google Collab uh, Collab, and uh, it's a free computing resource we uh, which can handle the uh, this big this big data sets, and I combined with my Google Drive, which is much much cheaper than a new computer. So uh, I mounted the the Google Drive to the the Collab, and uh, then can do what I, what I never, what I want. So, because the, I can also uh, in the following, I can also use the, the GPU computing as well. So it's uh, it's kind of uh, providing a an, a paradigm for the people to use this kind of uh, free computing resource. When down the need to use my uh, very old and very very uh, <laughs> uh, uh, very, uh, very old and very small computer. So. Uh, to be honest, the data set we process in, mm, we still need the further, further work before we feed it into the machine learning algorithm. Yeah, cool. It def definitely, it sounds like some consistencies across the board of trying to um, bridge, bridge the gap there. And I think that obviously there's a lot more uh, submissions on there than, than, than just as your guys' ones, but I guess why a lot of yeah, your four kind of came to the top was that, that explainability and usability 
so that people could actually really understand and follow what you're trying to do and repeat it and, and use the outcomes, um, which is, yeah, it was one of the main important things for us as well is that it's something that people can actually, yeah, it really is going to save them time. It really is going to make a difference for them, um, you know, whatever angle they're, they're coming at. And I think, you know, yeah, Jack, some of the stuff you did, like, you, that make, yeah, it's so true. People just want to open everything in Excel a lot still. <laughs> and we, you can't. And, and just those simple things of, like, here's a process of how to actually be able to make this data in a format that you can use it as a, in traditional GIS software is, like, so valuable for people that do want to look at large data sets and just don't even know where to start. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and I think, I think yeah. Well, I'm, I'm obviously very much too in the early stages of data science, so... I guess it was the workflow was just as much for me as anyone else to refer back to. But I think for someone, yeah, just to pick it up with no background knowledge and be able to step through it is, yeah. Mm, and the guys at the survey, you know, said the same thing. It's like, oh, everyone asks us for like this file and, it's, and how we can open it in Excel and we can't give it to them like that. And it's just like, oh, so they love what you did. But that example was like, oh, now we finally can show oh, people how yeah. to do this. <laughs> oh, good, yeah. good. Yeah, it happens to our team. At the beginning, we don't even know how to open it. We search around how to open this, uh, this like this format, this format. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was going to say, I mean, I think the way you guys kind of set up the, the you know, the, the prizes or the competition, the brief you kind of gave teams, I think was really well in that, you know, you, you had to make it so people could understand, you know, what the solution you were kind of providing. Um, and I think that's a key yeah, like because there is such a diversity of data sets, you know, like some of the teams here look at remote sensing data, uh, you know, which like if you're a lot more mathematically minded, I think you can got to kind of get your head around that data set a lot easier. Uh, you know, if you're more statistically minded, then, you know, geochem is kind of more your domain. So, you know, there are these kind of limitations that come through different data sets. Uh, so it was nice to see that people, you know, took on these different kind of data sets and then had a go at trying to do them. So that was quite good. I mean, we quite, we learned quite a lot from other people's submissions as well. So I think that was that was a credit to the way it was kind of set up. Yeah, I guess that yeah, that's the point. It's like sharing those learnings and um, yeah, I, I, without saying too much, interesting that you guys are potentially looking at at productizing part of that because you definitely see this. Um, everybody's kind of building their own uh, uh, data cleaning pipelines, I suppose, and. Um, I guess we're looking at, oh, not necessarily end-to-end pipelines, but there's a lot of people repeating the same work. And although they're probably doing it in different ways, like if you can help everybody kind of get through that kind of repetitive phase, I don't know how repetitive it really is, but I imagine it, it, it's fairly repetitive and, and there's maybe not too much, I guess, diversity in what people are doing. I could be completely wrong here, but they're just helping people kind of get through that piece where everyone's kind of doing the same thing um, is really valuable. Kind of, it's kind of similar to like this is what should happen with like the actual data in, in geology because I feel like so much of these like data quality issues that affect us all and everyone has to fix when doing data science like everyone's already fixing these errors like in-house in companies but then those like the data cleaning is not shared so everyone is constantly repeating the same like data cleaning and the data sets just stay like messy. Yeah, so really, um, well, maybe out of this uh, challenge, we can ask the survey to just put up a clean data set for everyone to use. So, I mean, I think um, that's the challenge with like surveys, you know, like to them, uh, yeah, they, yeah, they are kind of in a world where they are more about appending data to whatever they already have set up. Yeah, so to them, you know, when they, find, when they originally set up the system it was probably, you know, at least a decade ago. So, yeah. so the data set has relevance to you know a decade ago, not not necessarily now. So to them, it's about just making sure that people can access the data. You know, now I think hopefully it sounds like SA government, anyways, at least have kind of figured out that it's not so much about access to data; it's actually how you give the data that that might be an issue as well. So so hopefully they start addressing some of those problems now. Yeah, absolutely. I definitely I definitely think they're they're well on that that path, which is good. <laughs> like I'm mean, so very doubting. Um, oh, no, 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 I just like I just remind about uh, about the, the delivery of data. Like Sari is like is so beneficial to any data scientist. It's so good to get all the data and data quality. And every time I've like chatted with other data scientists about like let's say the Gola Patton and the 
the geophysics and all the data related to it, they look at this website and they're like, wow, this is a government website. Like, this is amazing. It's like really, it's really, really good. Oh, so shout out, shout out to Sarah and the <laughs> South Australian survey. Good, you get big ticks for that. <laughs> yeah, they'll really appreciate it, honestly. Um, okay, cool. So we've got a few minutes left. So I just wanted to round out, I guess, by um, giving each of you an opportunity to, um, yeah, uh, say anything else you'd like to share, do a gratuitous pitch of your business, whatever you guys um, want to kind of talk about as a, as a leaving comment or any future gazing of what might happen. It's pretty up to you. Um, Jack, do you want to go first? Yeah, well, I guess just, yeah, thanks to you, Holly, and the, the, yeah, everyone at Unearth for, like, for someone that's trying to, you know, break into that data science world, what you guys are doing is, you know, unreal, you know, like, even things like this, getting getting ideas from, from other people and, and but, yeah, mainly getting hands on, on data and being able to do stuff with it is, you know, it can, can be quite difficult. So it's good. No, thank you. Oh, thanks. I wasn't setting that up so you guys could all just say nice things about, about us, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Nick <laughs> Michael, go <laughs> uh, Shouldn't have made that funny face <laughs> Yeah um, Do you want to say uh, Your time? future vision oh, Yeah, future vision uh, All your geos are replaced by data scientists um, <laughs> Never going to happen um, Yeah, I'm going to be pretty cagey Because uh, I've got a few ideas for the explorer uh, uh, Well, not a few ideas. They're already in progress. But um, I guess, hey, any any exploration companies out there that are cynical for cynical towards machine learning, but are curious, like reach out to me because uh, I am also cynical, but also doing a business about it. And that's probably maybe you can say that Holly is that um, probably part of the my submission last year as to why, it, why it one was uh, taking a really realistic approach and not thinking, hey, I'm going to pay me $50,000. I'm going to predict your next gold deposit. So any companies out there that are curious, yeah, reach out to me. Cool. Yeah, yeah, I can agree. Definitely. Um, yeah, you you explained very, very well all the kind of steps that you were taking and um, it was really easy for you to understand. But at the same time, it was a really good, um, I guess, scientific approach. So those slides covered. Good job. <laughs> Interested to so see see the, the end of this one as well. Um, I'm yes. I'm gonna yeah. Wait and see. Wait and see. <laughs> I'll go next. So yeah, I, I would like to uh, share some uh, like uh, advice. Like uh, a lot of company have interest in like data science and machine learning. But at the beginning, they missed the ceiling analysis part. So because they did, didn't do that ceiling analysis, so they expect too much from data science or machine learning. It's kind of like a uh, long term. It's uh, step by step. The first step you need to like do data analysis. Once you find it's useful, then go to the next step, build a data pipeline, try to automate everything. If you find that uh, you, you have enough data, then step into the machine learning and uh, to do that, uh, rather than just uh, skip the first two step and and directly go to the step three, which won't work. Not too much qualified data to play around with. Yeah, so for data scientists. Yeah, that's my. Um, I, it's my name. Uh, okay, I, I, I believe when a data scientist work in a, a, a practical problem, we need to know something about the domain in the in that domain, and. I, but at the same time, the aesthetic science, we can provide something like the, uh, we just mentioned something like the endpoints and endpoints for deployment of the algorithms. I, but uh, it's a long way to go, but uh, we can offer something like the different versions based on the development of our, our algorithms. I, it, uh, of course, this is kind of the, the, uh, the final products. Uh, but uh, um, I don't know if we have enough time to, impl imp to uh, implement this part in our, our results. But uh, yeah, we are trying our, trying our best here. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot of work. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to say something? I don't uh -huh. feel like I'll say too much. Yeah. 
So, so most companies, again, most, uh, most companies out there are actually focusing on the algorithms and what they can do with the data. But I know when you go to companies and to actually implement a machine learning solution, you need to get, the companies don't have existing data sets. And the reason they don't go into it is because it's going to take a long time to actually build that sort of input data for your model. So we tell companies, you don't care what algorithms you use. There are many you can try, but it can help you automate the automate workflows. It will help create your database like 10 to 20 times or even 60 times faster compared to doing it manually. And so, so we want to take the solve the problem of getting data out of, say, Excel files, ASCII files, even PDF files using advanced NLP techniques and extracting bits of pieces that the geoscientist wants, putting it into databases and then helping you create your machine learning ready data set. Cool. So should people reach out to you now or is it watch this space, follow you on LinkedIn and oh, Twitter or whatever platform you're on? Is every, because every situation is so different. You can't create one general thing for everyone because each person has unique needs out of what they want from the data. So based on that, every solution is customized. But again, there are general purpose things that you'll see eventually. Yeah. I mean, Emma can say a little bit more. <laughs> He's better at speaking. He's, you know. um, no, no, I mean, I guess, again, like our whole uh, model, yeah, you know, like I don't think there's a shortage of people that know what machine learning algorithms to use. I think that's like, you know, well and truly kind of understood. I guess what we're trying to figure out is how do you handle uh, the kind of the, the data side, like within companies, within organizations, or even individuals, like how do we handle that better so you can kind of maximize the value out of that, that data set. Yeah, oh, like, I don't think it's a, like an unknown entity that most people in uh, geoscientific organizations aren't data people. So, you know, we weren't very good at kind of cataloging our data. We're not very good at storing it. You know, we're not very good at extracting things out of it, or we kind of only do it in kind of a niche way. Um, so, so, yeah, so our kind of, what we think the benefit that we can provide is that we just allow you to maximize as much as you can the data that you have. Um, so, you know, so, and I think if you want to go down the path of kind of building uh, machine learning as part of your organization, then I think you probably need to address the data side as well at some point. Yeah. yeah and if others want to organize their next hackathon, we might have the data set for you. <laughs> I'm not doing hackathons anymore. Online challenges. <laughs> but that sounds interesting. Uh, do you mean getting people to click? never mind? We'll touch base on that another time. But, uh, I like good way to good way to round it out, out the conversation. So, um, yeah, look, thank like honestly, that I, I really love these things. It's really in, in, enjoyable for me. I'm, not, I'm sure everyone that listens to this afterwards will get a lot out of this conversation as well. So, um, really appreciate everyone's time. Of course, anyone that's listening to this online, um, you can check out all of uh, these these guys wonderful work on Explore SA challenge page which I'll put a link to in the description below um, and of course yeah well we've got a month and a half left of uh, Explore SA challenge so <laughs> um, yeah um, be excited to share the results which will be out in the middle of September um, and any and all final and all uh, any final comments Oh, we're good. Uh, awesome. Good well, luck. thanks, everyone. Oh, sorry, yeah, go for it, Russell. Good luck, everyone. Oh, yeah, good luck. Yeah. Definitely good luck. Cheers good luck. Don't beat yeah. us, but good luck. Yeah, cheers. Thanks. I, only, I only have water. Um, but yeah, I, okay, great. I will stop that recording now. <laughs>